impacts the very quick four or five um, uh, years of, of, of um, possible testing? Well, uh, very quick. The first of all, I think the idea of the drug trial is a very interesting one. The difficulty is to do it regionally. You would need really complicated legislation to do that, which I think as a practical matter wouldn't. It would if de facto be a trial period because you put the system in place for the whole country on that basis, and it either worked or it didn't. And if it didn't work, Parliament could change it. Uh, but I, I love the idea of splitting it up. I just don't think one could do it. The second thing is how, effectively, the question was, how would the new body find out that this sort of abuses were going on, like the phone hacking? And I think the answer is that if you had a proper system where people could bring a complaint, the question would immediately arise where there'd been a breach of privacy. Where did they get the information from? And that would have led very quickly, if we had that system, right at the beginning, to un uncovering the phone hacking. Final point was the abuse of power point. The, uh, unfortunately, the, way to, the only way to stop the abuse of power is to stop the power, and that's why you need plurality. Once you have power, it's as Lord Acton said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We've seen that over and over again with the press. You need plurality, you need to split it up, and then nobody would have enough power to abuse it. Although that suggests that your answer to Phil's question is the answer isn't in a new system of regulation, the answer is in the completely different approach to how you define, measure, and plurality and prevent concentration of ownership. I, I think it's a separate question, and it's one probably I, not to put to the Leveson, because Leveson mentions plurality, but he hasn't actually been given the job of deciding what the solution. But plural, a lot of people realize that plurality is a problem. Yeah. Hugh. You um, mentioned abuse of power. Tr trials are an, uh, an interesting idea. The difficulty is the problem is not regional one. I mean, the problem is uh, uh, um, very much focused on the London press. I mean, if you did a, did a trial in Workington, I'm afraid you wouldn't really come up with very much. Or indeed, you know, in the Northwest, I mean, more seriously, that it, it, it really. Uh, you see from the evidence at Leveson that you know the the position, the experience of regional journalists is just completely different. Um, the, the Phil's first question rather worried me. It reminded uh, uh, the, the 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 there's a point being made again and again. Well, phone hacking is illegal, so that's against the law. So what's the problem? I mean, it, the, the 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 problem is that a reg I mean, you saw that in say in relation to shipment. I mean, killing people is illegal, uh, but, but an inquiry was set up to, to see why the regulator had failed to spot the problem at the earlier stage. And the question, the point of Leveson is, is not to decide whether phone hacking is illegal. It obviously is. Uh, the, the point of Leveson is to, is to find out why the relationship between the press, politicians, the police got to the situation where that could be done with impunity. That's why uh, uh, an inquiry was necessary. Uh, and, and it's much broader than phone hacking, deliberately so, because uh, uh, um, you know, the problem is not just confined. It's not just one rogue reporter, and it's just not just one rogue newspaper. Uh, um, in terms of the, the, the problem being abuse of power, uh, um, uh, and will a regulator solve that? I mean, of course, power will always be abused, uh, uh, and n any mechanism you set up to try and stop that abuse happening is never going to be 100% successful. But I think what the concern of those, you know, of all of us in this business is that, that there's been a serious imbalance that's grown up in, in, in over a number of years, I mean, for all kinds of complex reasons, uh, um, not just partly the, the huge power of the Murdochs, but not just, where, where the, the, the politicians have effectively, whether they've obeyed orders or whether they've just anticipated what those orders would be and done what the politicians wanted to without being given the orders, is really a matter of fine detail. They've gone along with the, 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 the agenda laid down by the major newspaper groups. The police have done the same, and, and, and that's not in the public interest. And some system has got to be devised to try and stop that happening as far as possible. OK, I want to get another... Uh, two or three questions in, so we're going to have a series of questions and then we'll go back to the panel for the last time. One there, and there's one behind you. Yep. Uh, hi, um, Will Gort from the Evening Standard and the Independent. Um, I used to work at the Press Complaints Commission. Um, but a couple of people started off by talking about the fact that there is a degree of common ground. And actually, the common ground seems to be that there needs to be some change. And actually, in the various models that are, that are being talked about on the panel, there's not a huge amount of common ground, I would say. 
Um, and where, whether that simply reflects the fact, and, and whether the fact that we keep repeating this process reflects the fact as well, that people's views of the press and where the balance of free, freedom of the press set against personal privacy lies it, it is so at variance from one extreme to another that we keep going through this process because there will always be some people who think that the balance is wrong. Um, but anyway, I mean, that's just a general point. The, the, the specific question I, I had was um, primarily for Martin. And really thinking about the public and how they will respond to whatever model emerges. And whether you think that in, in your proposed system, where there is almost a kind of two-tier structure where you have the, the big players regulated, the, you know, the, the less major companies not regulated but ob obliged to have an internal system of, of you know, compliance or regulation or whatever. Do you think that is going to confuse the public? Because it strikes me that one of the key issues for the new regulator um, is that it has to command respect from the public, um, or, or the new system of regulation rather, that it has to command respect from the public across the board. Okay, that, uh, good question. Um, yeah, um, there was someone behind you. Any, is there anyone else? Well, it's a question down here, and there's one up there, and we'll, that'll be it, I think. Uh, Sharon Maxwell Magnus, University of Hertfordshire. Um, two questions, really. The first is any sort of funding model been made on how your systems would actually cost out, given particularly the background of cuts and cuts in legal aid and so on. And um, secondly, I think the point was very um, made very strongly that clearly on, we've had an abuse of power um, on one side by the press. But as a journalist, one is concerned of the pendulum effect that maybe happened with the banks. At one point, you could walk into a bank and pretty much get a loan by certifying however much you earned. Now we're complaining that they're not giving any loans. And the des what sort of safeguards might there be? Um, I think, for instance, the example of the Workington footballer, or wherever he's from, which one might argue is interesting to the public, but not of public interest. Um, what would happen under if a pendulum swings where the politician who's, say, spoken out very strongly against private schools being a very bad thing, but is now planning to send, as in a recent case, their own little Johnny to a private school, and okay. Johnny is a juvenile, and that one might argue is a breach of privacy, but you can also argue that that's very much in the public interest. Okay. So uh, pe Pendulum is swinging the wrong way. Uh, the, the other way. We've got uh, a question over there, and then the last one down here. Me? Yep. Bill Haggerty, British Journalism Oh, Review. didn't recognise you, Bill. Hello, Steve. Hi there. Now, I, I was really pleased when this young chap over here mentioned the public, because nobody else has, actually. And I think that... I also love the hypothesis of earlier. So if I could just go back to a minute to... Where were we in Workington? And there's this footballer, and he goes to a nightclub, and he... Pull, he I nearly said pulls a girl. How old-fashioned. He meets a girl and goes off. He's married. He's got a couple of kids. The... Uh, uh, the girl goes to the local paper because she feels very wrong. The local paper. Let's have two. There's two scenarios then, isn't there? One that the public won't, the uh, newspaper won't run it because there's a big new muscular body uh, regulating the press, and so they're too worried. Um, so, or they do publish it, in which case the footballer goes, and does he then find some redress in regulatory body, or even more interestingly, the girl goes to the regulatory body and said, "Well, why wouldn't you let me publish this?" I'm a person too, why shouldn't I be heard? Okay, uh, I'm beginning to regret I mentioned the Workington Times, okay. <laughs> and final question down here. Quick, quick, otherwise I'm going to get it in the net from Helen for overrunning. And that's not a pretty sight. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Paul McMahon, I'm a student at the university. Uh, Lord Hunt said in his evidence about contracts, he said he got Richard Desmond already to he sign up. Hold the microphone up, Paul. He said he got Richard Desmond to sign up already. And um, if after five years it didn't work, then we could, we could introduce statutory regulation. But Calc proved in half that time that the spotlight will be off the topic and no one will care. So if, if after five years Desmond decides not to renew his contract, we'll be right back where we started. Okay. Thank you.